Alright, Spikers RC fans, this is Spikers. And I figured I'd give a quick tutorial today on how to charge and maintain your LiPo batteries and how they differ from your regular nickel metal hydrides. Uh, this is my charger. It's a pretty basic one. It's made by High Tech. It's got everything I could possibly want it to do. And it does it fairly efficiently. Um, one of the things I'm going to start off by saying before I even get into this too much is about LiPo safety. If you're going to use LiPos, get yourself a LiPo bag. I don't have one. Um, or get yourself a metal container, like this toolbox that I have. It's great for holding my LiPos. It, uh, that way if I ever have a LiPo fire, it can't really spread from this. right? And it just gives me more time to react. Having said that, lipos are actually pretty safe, com you know, regardless of what you may hear. It, it's pretty hard. Like, I've got this battery here, my old Racer's Edge. Like, it is swollen really bad. I don't use it anymore just because, but it, it's going to be next to impossible for me to kill it without intentionally trying to kill it. Let's put it this way. Used in a proper and safe manner the way they're intended, these are actually pretty safe. I mean, I'm not going to say they aren't going to smoke and catch fire occasionally, but the chances of it are pretty unlikely. Anyways, get that out of the way. Get back to a, uh, the charging and how to charge these. Um, what I'm going to give you is a quick overview. Say, here is a three cell LiPo that I use in one of my boats. And compare it to, like for example, a nickel metal hydride here, or a NIM battery as it's referred to. Um, these are actually just C, or C cell batteries that you can find in flashlights and radios and stuff like that. Just wired up so that you get, um, in this case, seven of them to produce uh, 8.4 volts. Right? They're rechargeable, just like anything else, just in a package with, in this case, a Traxxas end for charging. And this will, or this charger will charge these as well, as well as LiPos. Um, these are lithium polymer batteries, and there's, depending on how big the battery is kind of thing, there's different amounts of cells in them. The more cells you have, the more voltage gets delivered, and the faster your electronics run. Um, yeah, so anyways, that's the difference between them in layman's terms without going too into detail, but I'm going to focus on how to charge these. Uh, what you want to do is, let me find one with a better, that you can read. Uh, here, here's a Venom 3 cell battery. Uh, to charge these, it's actually pretty simple. It's just a matter of, i got to use an adapter here. Oh, that's the wrong adapter. Do I have the right adapter? Here we go. Basically, all you do, hook it all up like so, and then you have your balance lead that plugs into the balance board. Since this is a three cell battery, we're going to plug it into the three cell port. All right, one of the things that I'm going to tell you over and over and over again is whenever you charge a battery, you want to charge it on in a balanced state, and you know how you know it's in a balanced state because you can just select on here uh, your uh, lipo battery, lipo charge, change it over, lipo balance, and the next thing you do when you hit your start button is it's going to ask you what amperage to charge at, and to figure that out. Most batteries are going to tell you to charge at 1C or basically how to figure out what 1C is on a battery is you take your MA or your 5000 milliamp hours and divide it by 1000. In this case, divided by 1000, you're left with 5. And so that's saying that you can charge it at 5 amps. If this was 5500, you would end up with 5.5 and then you could change that to 5.5 amps to charge at, and that would be charging at 1C. 
Now some batteries, I'm not sure on this one here. Yeah, see this one is saying 1C or 5 amp. There's other batteries that you can get. Um, I'm not sure if I've got one here. That says... This is a high charge rate, but... Uh, yeah, this one I'm not even seeing what their what the C or charge rating is on this. If you don't see one on here, like for example in this case it doesn't have a C rating on it, charge it at 1C. Okay. Um, again, and going back to this, if this was say a 2200 ma battery, then you could charge it at 2.2 amps. Right, because you divide the number by a thousand. In this case, since this is already a charged battery, I'm not going to charge it again. So I'll put it back into my uh, toolkit here. But what I am going to charge is the little battery for my boat that I was running earlier today. And it is a 800 ma 3 cell LiPo battery. So I'm going to plug in the balance board here like so. So it is an 800 ma, so or probably not 800 ma, 1300 ma. So it does say on here that I have to charge at 1C. Right? It's pretty, pretty simple. Yeah, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but it says never exceed 1C or one times capacity charge rate. So if it is 1300 ma, I can charge that at 1.3. So I would have to set this. 1.3. The next thing I'm going to do when I hit the start button is it's going to ask me for the voltage on cells. Right now it's set for a two cell battery. I want to change it to a three cell, which is 11.1 .1 volt. It also says beside it three cell. Once we have that, I just push and hold down start. It says it's going to check the battery. It makes sure everything is okay, that the proper minimum voltage is in there, that it's not dead, and it's safe to charge. It says it's safe, it's confirming that it's a 3 cell, confirm enter, press start again, and it, it's going to start. It starts off by telling you that it's charging a LiPo 3 cell battery at 1.3 amps. The current voltage across all 3 cells in there right now, in this case 10.43, it's in balance mode, how long it's been on the charge state, and how many ma have actually gone into the battery. As it stands right now, this will go and do its thing. It automatically knows when to shut off based on the voltage in the, in the cells. To find out exactly how far along you are, you hit your hit the button again, and it tells you what your, your voltage is in each individual cell. A full cell is 4.20. Okay, as batteries age over time, that number can go down a little bit. But it tells you what the voltage is in each cell. So it's kind of handy to have. It's a bonus. This way you know it's being charged properly. You should not have any issues with the battery. And by treating your batteries properly, especially the LiPos, you can use them for a long time. These versus these, the NIM versus LiPo, I find these degrade way faster, but they're also way cheaper. Um, to put it in perspective, comparing this to a, a like-sized LiPo, um, I'll probably get about 10 minutes run time on this in one of my trucks. If I take a comparable battery in LiPo size, like... Uh, the two cell LiPo in my SCX10 for example, I'm getting you know 30, 35, sometimes even 40 minutes depending on how hard I am on it. So you're you're it becomes a cost versus benefit thing. Like I say, these are about 35 bucks for one of these. Uh, brand new. Um, a comparable LiPo is 70, 75 dollars brand new for a two cell. And 
yeah, it, it comes down to budget, how often you want to change batteries, and how comfortable you are with the different battery types. Having said everything, it comes down to personal preference. Uh, I'm all about LiPos, as long as you are safe with them, um, are knowledgeable with them, and can afford them, because, yeah, they're not cheap. Like, for example, this one here, I think, is about $120 for a 3-cell, mind you, but it's 5,000 watt. Now, you can get them cheaper. There's places online that you can go. Um, very well worth the money in a lot of cases. However, in some cases, you're getting B, C grade batteries, and you really want to watch out for that, because that's where they're cutting corners, and you might the chances of you getting a bad pack that might spark up on you or goes up exponentially. Uh, Park Zones are good brands I like, same with Venoms. Um, they all, they seem to do pretty good, even the Duratrax ones. Uh, stay away from Racer's Edge. I've tried even contacting them about their lifetime warranty and they won't do anything. Uh, they don't even actually return my calls or emails or anything, so yeah, for whatever that's worth. Um, I'm probably going to take this out and, I don't know, I'd say shoot it, but I don't have a gun. I'll figure out something creative to do to get rid of that. But that's it. So that's my tutorial on LiPo batteries, how to use them, how to charge them, and how to use a uh, LiPo charger. Um, these things are pretty much standard across the board. Um, you look at the videos of the different ones and all the four button ones like this, they all look the same, maybe a little bit different of a casing, but I even look at the screen in there and again, maybe a little different color, but they all do the exact same thing, the same menus, or they're very, very similar. So you can't really get confused. I mean, you get one, you use one, you can pretty much operate any of them. The only difference that you're going to get to is when you get some of the bigger units that are about four times the size of this that can actually charge four batteries at the same time, which is pretty cool. I gotta say, I like that. So, it just saves you time, really. But that's how to charge a battery. Anyway, guys, if you found this helpful at all, please like it. Um, hit that thumbs up button for me. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to do lots more videos, a bunch of running videos coming up soon. Um, and you know what, if you think any of your friends might get a kick out of these videos or be knowledgeable or need to have a little bit of a tip, please share the video as well. Alright guys, anyway, again, this is Spikers from Spikers RC, and I hope you guys have a fantastic day and have fun out there. Cheers guys.